Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Wente Talk. I am Tay, and I am here for another episode review of Love and Marriage Huntsville. I'm gonna skip through the stuff because it wasn't a lot, but it still was a very good episode. Say hi, Cookie. How did you enjoy the episode last night? Because you was here, right? Are you changing your last name? You don't have a last name? You have my last name? That's because your dads are interchangeable. So one week, we might have a new daddy for Cookie. When me and Cookie Daddy is together, that is Cookie's daddy, okay? Cookie got a couple stepdads around as well. Get over there. Okay? Y'all. So, and we also have, um, we're going to review Season 6, Episode 24. Um... Roger that sh okay? And um, I'll give you guys the deets that I shared with my Patreon members last night regarding the snots. They going for broke, y'all, okay? I'll give them another year. But we'll talk about that in a minute. In the meantime, let's jump into this episode. Like I said, it wasn't a lot, a lot but it was a very good episode we didn't have no snots we didn't have martell i think they just showed a flashback of them also like paulette and um a couple of other people noticed that martell was at that um at the um <clears throat> name changing ceremony take me back okay Yes, he was dressed up. Y'all know how the kids have the little tree branches, outfits, and stuff like that. The little costumes for their little school plays. Martell done stole one of the kids' damn costumes, put it on, and we already know his legs look like shiny ass shit. So, he probably ain't have to do nothing for the tree bark for the legs. They probably, they like two damn branches and had some little, you know, the little commando stuff out hiding out in them damn trees. We seen them over there. Child, I cannot. Or he could have been naked and just balled up on the ground and he would just look like a, a, a piece of shit. So, I don't know if they, they probably would have found, he probably would have found out because I don't think Mel got no pets. Yeah, because she changed the name from the dog she had. So, who knows? Who knows? I can't get into it, okay? See, if y'all let me know in the chat if y'all think he could have passed for a pile of shit. If he would have been naked and balled up, laying on the ground, so he could have been at that ceremony and just sat there and be still, if they would have think that he was just a pile of shit and not Martell. I don't know. Either or. With clothes on or clothes off, he act like a pile of shit. So, who knows? That's, I digress. Let's move on and get to the good stuff. Everything on the channel is alleged and in my opinion and for entertainment purposes only. Please like this video, subscribe to the channel, and also click the bell notification so that you know every time your girl upload. Okay? And share the video with family, friends, enemies, and frenemies. Okay? Let's get into the mess. <laughs> So the episode started off with um, Chris and Nell Fletcher at this little um, dance place. Cha cha sliding it up once, one time. Uh, once that, once that. Y'all, Nell was out there cha cha, wasn't she? Her and Chris was out there cutting a rug. Did they have a place to themselves? Cause it was empty. Okay, so I don't know if the Kristen ran out the whole place. Him and Nell don't dance with nobody else because they be all over the flow. They don't want to bump into nobody. Okay, so I don't know. They might have it like that. So they was talking. They was talking after they finished dancing. Then they started talking about um, <clears throat> Martell and how he was 
basically verbally attacking Nell at they damn home because they were attending a name changing ceremony. <coughs> One thing I did catch is that Nell said that Martell asked her about the, the name changing ceremony. From what they showed, she let him know that she was going. So I don't know if they cut that part off because she said it twice. She said it to Fletcher and then she said it to Mel. So I don't know if she just said that he asked her about it to make it look like she wasn't messy and putting it out there or if they cut that part out. Um, because he could have asked her like, you going, y'all going to that? I heard Mel having a name change ceremony. And she was like, yeah, so I'm going. But she even said in the confessional that she thought that this was a good time to tell him. So I don't know if she meant like tell him that she was going after he asked her about it. Or he said that he knew about it. Or what? Y'all let me know what y'all think. Nell, we don't like these little white lies. You know what? I don't know. I'll take the little white lies, especially if they're against Martell. Okay? We so messy and biased. Mm, mm, mm. And then, so, um, Chris was like, well, you know, do you think I need to talk to him? Chris, you don't need to be asking that. Your thing should have been to her. It should have been a statement, not a question. The statement should have been, I'm going to check off into that fool ass about you. Okay? Because Nell is a cute little Care Bear. He was out there on the tack. Ain't no telling what he would have did. He might have been a push Nell up into them bushes or something. And we wouldn't have been able to find her. I don't trust him. He's too much. So, um, then we get Tiffany and Stormy at this, like, decorating shop. Oh, I don't know what this is. Tiffany looks cute. Um... I don't know, for whatever reason, her face looked refreshed. Um, <clears throat> I don't know what the hell she had on, but it wasn't cute, okay? I don't know what Stormy had going on. It wasn't. Stormy was cutting Tiffany in pieces, Okay. Tiffany was confused because I think her and Stormy very much so had an alliance. Stormy is slick as hell. Y'all don't see when she came on this show, the three people that she went on attack with, now all of a sudden, she's trying to make amends and be best. They, they besties this season. When she first came on, she was cool with Destiny until Galentine's. Then they got into the scrap. Then she wanted to make up. Tiffany. She was cutting Tiffany in so many pieces. She didn't even say none to Tiffany. She wanted to beat Tiffany ass at Mel um pajama party, Christmas pajama party. And then now her and Tiffany the best of friends. After the pajama party, she couldn't stand Kiki because she felt like Kiki was doing this and doing that and being disloyal to her family. Just for her to be so close with Kiki now. Is any of this making any damn sense to y'all? I mean... <clears throat> She did align herself with the snots. When she was talking crap like, what about your husband? What they said on the internet? Da, 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 da. You had questions too. But now all of a sudden, y'all besties. And then not. So I, I don't know with Stormy. But Stormy, Stormy stay in some mess. And I, I don't know if I trust her too much. That's about that on that. Next up, we have male name changing ceremony. 
So Mama Vance gets there and, you know, she's telling Melody that she's seen that everything, everything was beautiful, that, you know, she loved her. She's looking, she's feeling everything. This is a big day for her and this, this and that. It was like the, the like, like she was marrying her family back. Her original family. That's what it seemed like. A rededication to her family. And f them hoes. Okay. And you know what? Like. If I was male. I definitely would have changed my name. But I think. I would have also hyphenated my kids names. I wonder is that why she in court. With Martell now. That she has the name changed to hers. I wonder is that the reason why they went to court. They're going to court. Or she's back with him at court. To. Petition to have the kids' names hyphenated. Because I'm quite sure the kids that can speak, they're probably like, we don't give a damn what the last name is. Cause... And the same thing with how when Nell was saying, like, her kids are going to be something. She don't want the mess that Wanda is saying to be associated with their legacy. And I'm quite sure, unfortunately, he's their dad. I'm sure she don't want that whole name associated with their legacy either. So at best, we can hyphenate it. So that's probably why she probably had them in court. I would hope that she probably would want them to change her, the, um, the hyphenate the kid's name, not change their last name from Hope because, you know, he's still their daddy. But um, I would want them to have it hyphenated. That way they can have a piece of her and his last name. Um, and then they can go from there. You know, the girls' names can be different when they, you know, get married or whatever. And if Martell has any type of problem about Tank changing his last name to Rogers Holt, then maybe he can do like Brian McKnight did and change his last name to Rogers Holt. So that Tank can still be a junior. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, Nell the Fletchers get there. We see um, male pretty friend uh, Chantel Foster. Um, Dr. Chantel Foster. Not to be confused. That lady is tall. She is what my uncles call a tall drink of water. Okay. <laughs> they call me that. <laughs> Cause I'm tall, but she looked like she taller than me because Mel is like five, seven Chantel. I'm five, nine. So, and mama van looked like she about five, nine, five, 10. So Chantel looked like she about six feet. Either she, if she not six feet, she every bit of five, 10, five, 11. Cause she looks tall, tall. Um, so they're there. Um, I don't know if that's a pastor or whatever he is. He reads the dedication and everything. Mel comes up. Um, her mom reads, a, 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 you know, some give her some words and speech and tell her how proud she was. Y'all, I know my allergies have been messing up. Y'all been seeing me online. My eyes just start watering for no reason. And... I think that's what happened on Patreon during the live watch party. Like, my eyes were watering for no reason. Um, I, I wanted to cry. You know, it was touching. It, it brought tears to my eyes. But the allergies, if anything fell, it was the allergies, y'all. Okay? Don't believe no words on the YouTube streets about me brawling, crying, and all of that stuff. It didn't happen. Okay? It was... You know, my eyes were just wet. Okay. So, contrary to the rumors that's been going around YouTube about me, um, it'd be your own, it'd be your own team, girls. You know, it'd be your own team. Okay. But we digress. But yeah, it was so like, oh my God, it was tears of joy. I mean, allergy tears of joy. And I know that Mama Van has to be going through it. Like to see all of that stuff coming to your child. 
Like, that's not a good feeling. Like, we be ready to hurt somebody if they push one of our kids or say something mean to our kids. But to have all of this stuff and all these people on attack with her all this time, like, and to see her still standing strong like she was raised and stuff, um, it's magnificent. I love it. I love it. Um, it was emotional also um, when Mel read her speech and when Chantel spoke as well. Um, she was Chantel was already crying in the audience, so that's probably who they thought was crying because you know me and Chantel might be around the same height. Okay, um, I got a wig her color, so yeah, they probably thought that that was me crying when it was actually Chantel. Um, so yeah, it it was nice. It was really nice, and at the end, well. After the ceremony and stuff like that, and they was, you know, getting to the, the, you know, meets and greets and all that stuff around the place. Nell pulls Mel to the side. Miss Nell pulled Mel to the side and wanted to talk about what she talked about with Martel and what he had to say. I know this is a reality show. And I know they had to try to bring some type of drama to the scene. Um, you know, I think I would have just declined. Because even though we, you know, we live for the little drama and stuff like that. We didn't need it. We, It was nice to have an episode that was not dramatized and was just bliss. You know, with some, most of the episode was just light and happy things beside the Tiffany and Stormy and all that mess. <clears throat> Everything, you know, and then we was going to have the Fletchers in the mess at the end of the episode. So it wasn't a need to bring any mess to the um, Take Me Back ceremony. Um, so I'm going to hold nail to task like we did when Destiny pull her to the side of the album release party talking about a GD village. Okay? So we're gonna hold Miss Nail to the same thing. Miss Nail, you was wrong. You shouldn't have approached her with that shit there. It wasn't necessary. Where was the fire? I don't know if she saw Martel out there balled up on the ground or in the bushes. We don't know. So I don't know if she thought that's why she had to tell her because he was around and she seen him. He was a spotted I don't know, but it looked like security was around that mofo heavy. Okay? <clears throat> it was wrong time. It, was, it, it wasn't it was necessary. Actually, I don't even think it's necessary for her to tell Mel about Martel, what he felt about it at all. She don't give a damn. And you see that she don't give a damn because she still went through with it. So, that's my thought on that. Um, other than that, the episode, that part was very nice. Uh, uh, uh. then we get to this part with Stormy and Kyle. Kyle is, let me see what Kyle is. Kyle is supposed to be the CFO, COO, FBI, CIA, IRS, ATF, <laughs> of Canvas Beauty. <laughs> when? When the hell did Kyle get implemented in here? And y'all know what this scene reminds me of. <laughs> it reminds me of. Do y'all remember when Shonuff was saying that she was going to sue the blogger that was talking about her and stuff like that. Or talking about her mama. And... <laughs> 
And then she gonna take a picture like outside of a courthouse with like three white people. <laughs> Like, we were supposed to be like, ooh, Wanda got some lawyers. Because you're taking pictures with people that's white. We're supposed to assume that they're lawyers. How dumb do you think we are? Like, only ignorant people would think that. So, for Stormy to have this white guy up here, Stormy, we know your policies and procedures still ain't shit. Shit ain't going nowhere. Where the hell Kyle get to be the CEO? Where did Kyle come into play? And how old is Kyle? 18? I cannot. I cannot with Stormy. Stormy is manipulative as fuck. This is why when people come out with different things, That desk is clean beside the, the strategic placing of the Canvas Beauty products. Okay? She got them on that table instead of shipping them mofos to people. Out of all things to have at that table, he ain't got no damn pen, no paperwork, nothing. He ain't taking no notes, no meeting minutes. Why the fuck did he have a damn box of Kleenex? From where they're sitting at, or wherever they at, I don't know if they in Stormy Home or what. But this is not the office that they fired Junior in. I'm looking at the chairs trying to see, like, whose office is this? And if this is Stormy's office, why the fuck is he have to hand her a Kleenex? Why you ain't have? Why you ain't know what a Kleenex said to grab them? Again, why do you have Kleenex on that damn desk? In case you because you staged this damn scene too damn because you knew he was about to fake cry. No makeup drip. The napkin remained clean. The napkin held his own. Maybe this is um, Courtney's. I mean, maybe this is Stormy's office because that picture of Courtney in the back. <laughs> DDM did him. This one's for you. Courtney in the picture like this. A big shot and a small shot. What the for? <laughs> Who the hell are you supposed to be? Courtney D. Williams? I'm like, I, get this shit off my damn screen. Stormy, you been fake pretending this whole damn... I can't do it. <laughs> I cannot do it. Okay? Stormy, this man ain't helping you do shit, but do film this scene. I mean, Courtney on the picture, the big picture, and then the little one. It's a little one right there. I said... <laughs> <laughs> what was that last night? Is Courtney getting paid to be in the scene because of the picture? What the fuck? Y'all, I'm tired. I cannot. I'm done with Stormy and this and this make believe fake pretend mess she got going on. Stop it and leave us the hell alone. Then y'all, we get to the Fletcher's house. The Fletcher's got. <clears throat> They kids there, the niece is there. Um, I guess they raised her as well. 
Nail on the girl head about a job. <laughs> she must have had her working at the daycare. She must have been lazy and Nail had to fire her. Um, Nail in that cooking, then threw in that kitchen and the threw down the greens beans. <laughs> That plate was looking good. And so, I guess the girl that that's with the white guy, they could have had him over there at Stormy House helping them, acting like he was the CFO and COO and all that CEO of Canvas Beauty. If they just wanted to grab any random white guy, now we supposed to believe he running your company now because he white. Child, back to them. So that must be Chris's daughter that they had that he had before Nell. And then I wonder how old are they? I wonder who the girl is. That must be Oh, that's Denise. She is pretty, and I like that white shirt she got on. I wish my stomach ain't had no stretch marks on it, because I had that shirt on with the bottom part close up. The top part cute, so I wear the little half things, but only I it gotta have on some high waist. That's just sort of cute part of my stomach. Um, but the kids look good. They are pretty family. They a nice looking family. When I tell you they got into it as they was getting up into this mess. Oh, yes. They wasn't holding back. Snots. I know y'all went on the episode, and we love y'all for that on. But Snots, y'all need to see what y'all got to do when y'all on reality TV. You better tell her because if you don't, we're going to find out for you. Okay? Since y'all want to keep coming on this screen and sorting out fucking intelligence... And we have somebody that's coming on, don't mind, saying Lil' Chris' ass was in jail. Um, then he had the damn dogs at the house by themselves. We had to go around there, get the damn dogs. Then they were so chewed up, we had to damn take them to the vet. They on the damn deathbed. We had to take them, get them fixed up at the vet. Damn near $4,000. Then we had to get his raggedy ass out of jail. $6,000. Chris would have been staying in jail or them dogs would have been up in that jail with him. Okay? I tell you that right now. So, her and the son, they get fixed their place and stuff. So, her and the son is going back and forth about <laughs> the dogs. He like, he want his dogs back. Now, like, you got to pay me the money that you, um, that we spent fixing them dogs up. He like, I ain't tell y'all to do that. Y'all know how kids are Kids and ungrateful mofos ain't shit, okay? Because whatever condition Nell them found them dogs in, that's the condition Lil Chris would have had they ass in had <laughs> he hadn't got locked up. Now, I hope he wasn't over there on no Michael Vick mess and Nell them had to get them dogs patched up so they can drop some of the charges from them. Because that's what it's seeming like. But I digress again. So they going back and forth, and then <laughs> I think Chris' daughter tried to chime in. <laughs> Nell was like, "You shut the fuck up!" <laughs> like Vera off Harlem Nights. Remember when Benny told her, like, shut the fuck up, Vera. You shut the fuck up, Benny. <laughs> when Nell told her that, I felt that to my damn car, okay? If I was hurt, the scene would have wrapped and I would have left crying, okay? Crying or left going to a therapy office, the nearest one. I need an emergency. If now, <laughs> now little like so man, yo, shut the fuck up, Lexi. I was like, oh. when she said that, I shut the fuck up. Okay. 
Now get them hell at that house. I don't know how Chris even found the courage to cheat. Because I know when he got caught. <laughs> he probably cheated. <laughs> he, he, probably, he probably cheated one time and now skint his ass alive. Okay. Oh, I cannot take it. Well, they got next episode coming up. Um, for next week, they got Chris and the daughter, the one with the um white husband. I guess they was outside and she was telling Chris, I guess, like that he didn't raise her or start taking care of her until she was like 28 or being there around her until she was like 28 or something like that. And Chris was like, what? Like, man, yeah, yeah, get the fuck on then. Yeah, go on, go on. So the, the flat is about to get the cut in the food, okay? Kids involved. Once you get 21 or 18... If you haven't aired out your grievances about your upbringing, get the hell on you. Whatever you got from here on out, <laughs> good luck, okay? I can't go back and raise you. So whatever fuck ups I did that it happened, we gonna move past it or go on on about your business. Like I said, good luck, okay? I don't want to keep hearing it. I ain't got no other kids that I can make the same mistake with. So you just try not to make the mistake with your kids when you have them. Okay. That's what it is. Don't come. I don't want to hear. Get out of my face. Shoot. Come with that mess. You 82 years old. Come and talking about some damn upbringing. Boy, please. We at my funeral. Get the hell out of here. <laughs> so Chris <laughs> kindly dismissed her. Ooh, I know. Yeah, she probably that that husband was taking her to therapy because she was you're lying. And if you're who the fuck you talking to? Who lying? One of these kids in here? Cause I know you ain't talking to me. I don't know how y'all was raised, but how I was raised, cause my people from Mississippi, okay? To tell an adult that they're lying, all this about to disappear, okay? They might install them back and give you a couple of dollars at the two fairy come that night. Because we had two two fairies. One that just came when you had the natural two fall out, whatever the case may be. Ah, you happy. You know, you get the two fairy. Then we had the two fairy that came when we got out of pocket and got one of our shits knocked out. So it was like an emergency two fairy. Okay. <laughs> Let us all call ourselves telling the adult they lie. That was a cuss word. Okay. I never heard my uncles or aunties tell my grandma they was lying. I none of the kids, the grandkids, I ain't never heard them say that that one of the adults was lying. Never. You might be talking to somebody else and be like, mama was lying. But in front of mama, mama, no, I didn't do that. That's not. You lying on me, please. <laughs> These kids out of control these days, okay? But yeah, that part. And the next um preview, this for the previews, y'all. Preview come up with Mel and um Brittany talking about Mel dating. So I was right a couple months ago when I put that video out because I'm like, Lauren hanging out in Huntsville awful lot. And then when they had that um blackout when all the lights and stuff had went out down there and they was like, they was going to go to a hotel. I'm like, well, Mel just won't go to her man house. So I was like, hmm. So Mel back single. I wonder what happened. What do y'all think happened? Because she seems so happy. Hmm, I don't know. I want to know what happened. Y'all know I'm nosy. But Mel said, <clears throat> I ain't only talking about no, you know, getting, you know, down up in the Huntsville in Alabama. 
Nell said, this kitty cat will be international. Okay? This is going to be international. Hello, kitty. Bonjour, kitty. Okay? <laughs> bueno, kitty. <laughs> Hola, kitty. Okay? <laughs> Mel, don't give a damn. Gil, go worldwide, okay? Because th they wouldn't give a damn about doing it with us. I'll come through. That's that's the one where she needs. She needs to do, because uh, you know what? Black women don't date outside our race enough, okay? Did y'all know that black women were the highest of races? that don't date outside of their race. We have the highest percentage. Every other race dates outside of their race frequently and more frequently than us, okay? We need to broaden our horizons. I know we be wanting us a black man or whatnot, but they don't be wanting us and they be full of shit. Not all of them, but most of them, okay? So we need to sp spread it out, Okay? Get the stereotypes out of your head, okay? Because that's all my mama did. She, <laughs> she had one black boyfriend after my brother daddy. And since then, <laughs> my mama do not date <laughs> no black men. She was on the, um, she be on those little dating sites too. The ones like where you, um, like you pay and stuff like that. So, she had a boyfriend in Florida, and they were on, like, the little face thing or whatever, or, you know, talking and stuff. And the screen had messed up, and the screen went black. And she was like, he was like, oh, I'm black. And she was like, and you dumped. <laughs> But yes, moms don't mess with nobody, okay, of the African-American persuasion anymore, all right? So, I'm with Mel, date outside your race, get free, open, broaden your horizons, all that stuff. Um, Martel and Chris is talking on the phone, and Chris is talking about... um. Yeah, my wife told me. He oh, he was saying Martel was telling Chris like, yeah, your wife was getting hard on me and they going coming down on me hard. He said, yeah, she told me you was getting a little loud with her. You're not gonna be talking to my wife like that. And Martel whole little expression changed. But I want to see what the whole scene is looking like because Chris, this not a time for you to be playing with him or taking it light. Just the way you were stern with him about getting out of those people's houses. When you came to his house and how you was like no nonsense with him, you need to be like that when it comes to him disrespecting your fucking wife and your fucking home. Because he's like twice her damn sight. Well, no, he ain't. He's just a little bit taller than nail. So it's no reason for him to be getting angry with her because she don't want to believe his damn lies. And it's sad that he comes to her with that shit when they have, like they said, they have been mentors and counselors to, to Martel and Mel all these years. Now, all of a sudden, you coming up with this cheating shit that you never discussed when they was counseling y'all and stuff like that before. So get the hell out of her face with that mess. Run and talk that mess to people that don't, um, that don't like Melody and just saying that they believe that and they know they don't. Because even with them, all the time that they were together and Martel would get caught cheating, they would be talking and going to counseling or whatever the case may be about him cheating. It was never about her and him cheating. Until she divorced him. A time that it don't even damn matter now. 
Because I would have told him, yeah, I did the helicopter on a couple damn dicks. Okay? Period. And Mel was small too. A guy could have had her all up doing somersaults on that mofo. Okay? Quit playing with us. And the last scene is with Stormy, Kiki, and Tiffany. <sighs> Stormy is telling Kiki that her and Tiffany need to talk. Um, Tiffany, not Tiffany, Kiki is sitting there sweating like a damn whore in church. Okay? Kiki, I'm kind of with a mean. Let, let, let the mecca, you, I don't, no, I ain't gonna say that because whatever you need to do to stay off the stuff, just do that. If it's making this shit, the sweat ain't never hurt no damn body. Um, just don't sweat down there at the bottom and, and get up and have production seeing that and wear dark jeans. Okay. So we can't see it. Cause if we see you like Marcel, we putting it on here. We posting. Okay. So don't get upset. Um, so we put Marcel up here just to remind y'all. Okay. But yeah, um, I don't know why Stormy wants to get Ki um, Kiki and Tiffany together. I wonder if Stormy trying to form a, a, an alliance. To go against the snots. Because she need two other people. And if she get two other people. And two other couples. They can wipe out. The snots. What do y'all think? Let me know. Tiffany comes over with baby Ace. And Tiffany, you act like ain't nobody gonna cuss your ass out in front of that baby. But I damn sure will. Lil Ace will have to hear me cussing his mammy out. And Lil Ace might, like I said, in the Patreon, Ace might tag himself in. Because he's sick of his mammy. Okay? Tiffany had braids in her hair. What did y'all think about that? Feel weird about Tiffany having braids. I know Tiffany is black, but for whatever reason, I feel like she black fishing. I don't know. <clears throat> it's weird. But let's get into the final deeds, okay? <clears throat> These knots. Y'all, they are here. Let me go to this one. <laughs> Shut up, cookie. Oh, here we go. So I showed y'all the documents of Kimmy and Maurice um, the other day, Friday. And Maurice had owed back taxes in the amount of like $86,000, like almost $86,000 um, that he just paid this year in like April or June. He owed those taxes from not filing taxes from 2014 to 2019, okay? Like I said in that video, it's possible that they may have been higher, but the taxes that he filed 20, 21, 22, maybe they was offset if he got a refund or something like that. Maybe he they offset some of that balance and put it toward what he owed already. And this is in state taxes, Okay. So I said they paid it off in I think April or June of 2023. So it was paid off. <sighs> but now I come before you with this. Remember 
revolving credit mortgage. This mortgage contains a due on sale provision and secures indebtedness under a credit agreement which provides for a revolving line of credit and may contain a variable rate. This mortgage security instrument is made on October 2nd, 2023. The grantor is Kimberly Grant Scott, FKA, frequently known as Kimberly L. Grant, and Maurice Jefferson Scott, wife and husband. They give the information who the borrower is, the mortgagee is um, Redstone Federal Credit Union. <coughs> Let me read this last sentence. The total outstanding principal balance owing at, at any one time under the credit agreement, parentheses, not including finance charges thereon at a rate which may vary from time to time and any other charges and collection costs which may be owing from the time to time under the credit agreement, um, parentheses, shall not exceed... $250,000. That sum is referred to herein as the maximum principal balance and referred to in the credit agreement as the credit limit on the final payment date, 30 years from the date of this security instrument. The entire indebtedness under the credit agreement if not paid early, is due and payable. The borrower does hereby mortgage, grant, and convey to lender with power of sale upon breach of the terms. Hereof, the following described property located in the county of Madison, State of Alabama, which has the address of, and it gives Kimmy's name address in Harvest, Alabama. Okay. And then the next page that I'm going to show, it's like six pages, but I'm only showing page one and part of two. And then page six, which is here, this is their signatures. Request for notice of default and foreclosure under a superior mortgages or deeds of trust. It's signed by the notary, all of that. October 2nd, 2023. Last month. They took out a line of credit of $250,000 on Kimmy's home. What it's looking like to me is that Maurice is trying to put this girl in the fucking poorhouse. Ain't no way in hell I would be letting him run this stuff up and the way that we've seen Marceau and Maurice act they you could tell they're not used to having nothing so if they took out this line of credit I guarantee you it is my opinion and from what their previous actions are Maurice is in that line of credit buying stupid shit that they don't need trying to impress people that don't give a damn Kimmy what are you doing like 
see, like, if you was taking care of Maurice and he just accept what you give him, but for you to sit around here and it looks like you're allowing him to just run your credit up like Marceau is doing Tisha, nothing is in his name. Why? And I wonder, too, if... If he can't get those loans and stuff in his name, is that car that he got, that the one that he get wrapped and unwrapped and all that type of stuff, do is that in his name? Because Tisha said he went and got that without even consulting with her, but she going to ask him for permission to put some shit in her damn name. What happened to that Porsche truck you was going to get? That you and Destiny went down to that dealership wasting them damn people time and ours. I just don't know. And then Kimmy was driving that Mercedes when she just had that accident. Why you wasn't driving your Jeep since you wanted your Jeep so much? And even if they had that G-Wagon, that's like a Jeep. So... I don't understand what she wanted. I don't know. Sometimes people just want what they want. But <clears throat> I don't understand that. And then Maurice had that Mercedes that she was driving that she had the accident in, which it looked like it was nothing really happened to it. But where is Maurice working? We see Micah on you know, posting pictures of him and LeBeric and Destiny um, when they closed on that home, finally sold that home. So I'm thinking that maybe he must have been um, representing the people that bought it because he didn't LeBeric had just shaded the fuck out of Tisha. Like, Kiki, are you with me? Where the water at? I got Kiki with water bottles for fools like you, Tisha. Because punks jump up to get beat down, okay? So, I couldn't see him doing that to Tisha and saying that stuff to Tisha and then, and Tisha saying that stuff to him and then them coming and doing some business together. So, it must have been um, Michael Michelle on the part of the buyers for that house. Because I don't know what the hell is going on with Kimmy and her muskrat looking ass. She just going, she going down bad. Maurice is taking her a free ride in the damn pole house to the pole house. Let me get up out of here. Okay, y'all. So what do y'all think about this? What do y'all think, Maurice? Why are they taking out this line of credit? For what? What y'all got to do? Y'all got the cars y'all want. What else are y'all trying to do? Where's the businesses at? I want them off this show. I'm tired of them. We, gonna, we can get a spot too. I, like I said, I don't even take Stormy. Even though she need to go. But if we can have it. We can have Mel, the Flatchers, Kiki and her husband, Stormy and Courtney. And I mean, I'll even keep Tiffany and um Lou. Because Tiffany and Lou could be the other part of Mel. Since she ain't got no damn man or no love and um... And Tiffany and them, don't nobody half-ass think about them. So, that's two halves coming together to make one. And they can move on because I, I, I'm i sick of this. And I heard also they were saying last night that old Marty Slautel pulling all these antics because he's been uh, demoted to friend of the show. So what y'all think? Somebody had asked in one of the Facebook groups, like since Destiny got fired for not being in love or a marriage and so why uh, Melody not fired? And I was like, because it's her damn show. And that's not the only reason why Destiny got fired. Her ass wasn't trying to give no information. She was tight lip about everything, had an attitude when you ask her a damn question. So it's no need for her to be on the damn screen and you're not in love or marriage. You can't give us nothing. 
Say hi, Cookie. Cookie want to be on the next season. Where your boyfriend at? Because it better not be Peanut. It's Peanut. Ain't no telling. Get on over there. So messy. All right. That's all I got for y'all. I ain't got no more. Y'all let me know what y'all think down in the comments about them documents too. And until next time, y'all, like the video and subscribe to the channel. Bye.